Hi everybody, it's Katie, back with another episode of my vlog, and tonight is the first night of Hanukkah, so I wanted to take today's vlog to talk a little bit about Hanukkah and our family's Hanukkah traditions and how they sort of relate into our other holiday traditions and how we celebrate this holiday. So, first of all, Happy Hanukkah to everyone who's watching out there, whether you're Jewish or not. I'ma wish you a happy Hanukkah. Um, Jews are an extreme minority on this planet. I think we make up something like 2% of the global population. So I don't normally expect anyone to actually know about Jewish holidays or traditions or stories or what's going on with that. Um, but I will say that in the last, ow, 10, 15 years, it's been kind of amazing to go from a world in which Hanukkah stuff was kind of hard to find and you had to really know where you were going to be able to get your uh, candles and your gelt and your, you know, correctly themed wrapping paper each year to a world where every year now I go to Target and they have a Hanukkah end cap like at every Target that I've been to. And I mean, I live in the West Coast where there's more Jews than other parts of the country, obviously. But um, it's been pretty surprising um, moving from Berkeley, California, where there's an extremely large Jewish population to Eugene, Oregon, where there's like no Jews at all. Um, and then Portland, where there's a, more than Eugene, but not that many. Um, but like I can go into Winco, my local cheap grocery store and find Passover foods um, on an end cap at Passover time and I can find Hanukkah stuff at Target and um, these other just kind of major normal mainstream um, American stores. So that's pretty cool. So maybe you guys know more about Hanukkah than I think you do. Um, but just start with a little um, what's the deal with Hanukkah? I'm, just, I'm like maxing out on my Jewish shoulders today for my vlog. Um, so in case you don't know, the holiday of Hanukkah celebrates um, a miraculous occurrence. Um, 2000 plus years ago, uh, second century BC, back when the Holy Land was part of the Greek empire, uh, the local king outlawed Judaism and was, uh, you know, set up a statue of Zeus in the temple and was doing like pig sacrifices and all sorts of stuff that you wouldn't want to do um, in a Jewish temple. And then a group of Jews called the Maccabees decided to rise up against this and say, nope, we're not going to have you sacrificing pigs in our Jewish temple. And they went to um, take back the temple and rededicate it. And as part of the deal in the Jewish temple, there was supposed to be a menorah burning continuously, uh, basically a holy flame. Um, and the oil for the holy flame was a specific type of purified olive oil, which had to be made in a specific way. Um, and it's a process that took, I think, a week. Um, and so the Maccabees get the temple back and they go to light the menorah and they only have oil for one day worth of this thing burning. Uh, but then a miracle occurs and their one day supply of oil lasts them for eight days which is enough time to make more of the special holy oil that they need to light the special lamp. And that's basically it. It's not a very important Jewish holiday, um, but because of its proximity to Christmas, especially in America, Hanukkah has become more and more important over the years as this kind of counterpart to Christmas. So sort of like having Jewish kids not feel so left out of the Christmas deal. So we're non-religious Jews. We don't go to temple. We don't, um, you know, do a lot of praying and um, religious observance type stuff, but we're cultural Jews. And so we mark the year. We celebrate Passover in springtime. We celebrate Hanukkah in the wintertime. We mark the Jewish New Year in the fall. Um, we don't do a bunch of the other holidays, but we do want, we make sure to hit those kind of big three each year. Um, and yes, because we have kids and because Christmas is such a big deal, we do kind of treat Hanukkah as the Jewish Christmas, which again, it's not at all, but it kind of turns into that. It's hard when you have multiple religious traditions or cultural traditions in one family, um, you know, balancing that out. So it's like, okay, well, in my family of origin, 
my mom is Jewish and my dad is, well, nothing at this point, but he was, he was raised sort of vaguely Christian. He actually converted to Judaism before he married my mom. Um, but when I was a kid, we had both Hanukkah and Christmas every year. Um, when my parents split up, it was Hanukkah at my mom's house, Christmas at my dad's house for sure. Um, but that's kind of where my background is. Then I marry Sean. He comes from a, uh, secular Christian tradition, if that makes sense. Again, American, um, cultural Christianity, celebrating Christmas, celebrating Easter, but not in the religious sense. Um, and so we make sure to celebrate sort of the, the, the dual holidays or the bipartisan holidays, if you will. So we do Passover right alongside of Easter and we do Hanukkah right alongside of Christmas. Now Hanukkah, because it's on the Jewish calendar, kind of moves around in the year. And sometimes it's closer to Thanksgiving. Sometimes it's closer to Christmas or even like Christmas will sometimes be in the middle of the week of Hanukkah. Um, this year, Hanukkah starts tonight on the 10th. Um, and again, it goes for eight nights. So we actually have a little break between the end of Hanukkah and the beginning of Christmas this year. Um, but it doesn't always play out that way. So what we like to do in our family is we get a bunch of presents for the kids. The kids get presents for each other. The other relatives get presents for the kids and for us. Um, and we kind of mix and match and we don't really think of anything as being a Christmas present or a Hanukkah present. Um, but we kind of put them all into a big festive pile of presents. And then we pick and choose um, which ones we're giving out on Hanukkah and which ones we're saving for Christmas. Um, some nights on Hanukkah, we each open a big present. Some nights on Hanukkah, we each open a really small present. Some nights on Hanukkah, we'll open one present that's kind of for the whole family. Um, one of the big things in Jewish families for Hanukkah is playing games together. So I like to make a point every year of getting at least one new board game, one new uh, jigsaw puzzle, and one new video game that we can play together because that's what we like to do. Um, so yeah, what else do we do on Hanukkah besides opening presents? Well, the first thing we do is when the sun goes down, we light the menorah each night. Now, the menorah that Jewish families light now is a candelabra with candles on it. We don't do an oil lamp. I don't know why. I've actually never had this one explained to me. I'm thinking mess, um, but I mean, a candle menorah gets pretty messy. The wax winds up dripping everywhere. We always have to place it on like a sheet of foil on the table so that wax isn't getting everywhere. Um, but this is the miracle of oil about a oil lamp that stayed lit for eight nights. So it's always kind of bugged me that we don't use an oil lamp for lighting the lights on Hanukkah, but Okay, that's what we do, it's candles. Um, so a traditional um, menorah, or Hanukkiah actually, a menorah just is a candelabra, um, is uh, in, in the traditional branched candelabra shape. Um, but I have a special, special menorah that we found um, at a thrift store in Eugene of all places. I have never ever run into another menorah like this and it's the most perfect menorah ever for a family that has uh, both Jewish and Christian traditions around the holidays. You guys ready to see my menorah? It's a Christmas tree shape. Do you love it? This is like my favorite thing. Um, so the menorah has eight spots going around on its branches and then one up top. Now each night of Hanukkah, you add another candle. So in the first night of Hanukkah, we're gonna have one candle down here and then we're gonna have one up here. Now that's the one you light first and then you use this one to light all of the other candles on the menorah. So on the first night of Hanukkah, we're actually gonna have two candles lit. On the second night, we'll have these two plus this one. Third night, it'll be these three plus this one all the way up to the eighth night of Hanukkah when there will be one candle on each branch of this tree and the whole thing will be lit up and it'll be very exciting and very beautiful. And I will probably post a picture on my Instagram because I think I do that every year. Um, so that's the first thing we do. Um, and then usually the second thing we do uh, is open presents. But then the third thing we do is we play dreidel. And maybe you guys have heard of dreidel. Um, it is a gambling game. You play it with a dreidel, a little spinning top, that has these Hebrew letters on it. Um, the letters are the initials of the Hebrew phrase Neskadol Hayasham, which means a great miracle happened there. 
Um, so this is like a traditional style of dreidel and you spin it and depending on what face comes up, you have to take different actions. Sometimes you get to take money out of the pot. Sometimes you have to put money into the pot depending on what you spin. Um, we've got a nice collection of different types of dreidels and styles. We all have our favorites. We actually found a couple years ago, I found these awesome D20 dreidels where it's all the little four symbols of the dreidel repeated five times each on a D20, which I mean, how cool is that? So we use that one too. Um, and you can gamble with real money if you want to, but most families use Hanukkah gelt, which is of course gold covered chocolate coins. Oh, yum, yum, yum. And then that's funny because of course the kids start eating the chocolate when they're supposed to be gambling with it. And then suddenly Jimmy has eaten all of his chocolate and is like, I can't play a dreidel anymore. And everyone has to kick him some more of their chocolate. But you can also play with real money, which is really fun um, or can be disastrous depending on your gambling luck, I guess. Um, so that's those are our fun Hanukkah traditions. Now, the other big deal with any Jewish holiday is food. So your big deal for Hanukkah is it's the miracle of oil. So we have fried food. Um, potato latkes are the traditional Hanukkah food, um, which is a fried potato pancake served with either applesauce or sour cream or jam or any combination of those delicious flavors. Um, latkes are amazing and I always eat way too many of them each year and then totally regret it, but it's worth it. We do it once a year. Uh, I think Latka Day is on Saturday this year. I'm very excited about that. We're having our usual, uh, hamburgers for dinner tonight, but I was like, Hey, miracle of tater tots, at least like, can it qualify? Um, another thing a lot of Jewish families like to do is make homemade donuts during Hanukkah, which is so awesome and delicious and yummy. And I don't know if Henry wants to do homemade donuts this year. If he doesn't, I will just go buy donuts for the family at the donut shop. But, um, I would love if Henry made us homemade donuts. So there's my Hanukkah wish. If Henry's watching this, he doesn't watch my vlog, but if he does, Henry, make us some Hanukkah donuts. Oh, so good. Um, and I always try to get some fried chicken in the mix somewhere in, uh, the whole Hanukkah deal because hello, miracle of oil, fried chicken. That's what you have to have for the miracle of oil, right? Um, growing up, we would usually have like a beef brisket for our big Hanukkah dinner. Um, but again, I'm, I'm, I'm all about that fried chicken. I think we should have fried chicken for Hanukkah. So that's what we're going to do. Um, then we are going to have like a little break when Hanukkah ends and before we get to Christmas and then we Christmas like a non-religious American family. We usually get our Christmas tree and decorate it on the 15th because that's my dad's birthday. And that was the tradition when I was growing up as a kid. We always, that's what my dad wants to do on his birthday. So that's the day you decorate the tree in my, uh, personal Christmas mythology. Um, and then we of course, watch Christmas movies throughout the month, Cinema Club. Um, and then Christmas Eve, we do the typical, put some milk and cookies out for Santa. The kids have to be in bed by a certain time so that Santa can come along and fill everybody's stockings. And then the next morning they get up, they're allowed to tear into their stockings as early as they want, but everybody has to wait until after breakfast to start opening presents on Christmas. Um, the other typically Jewish thing that we do on Christmas is we almost always watch a Kung Fu movie sometime on Christmas day and eat Chinese food for dinner. Um, this has been a longstanding tradition. Historically, the only restaurants open on Christmas day were Chinese restaurants. And so Jewish families would almost always wind up getting Chinese food on Christmas because that's what you do when nothing else is open and it's not your holiday. Um, but something weird has happened. And in the last, mm, I want to say like five or six years, it hasn't been as long as there's been a Hanukkah end cap at Target, but it's like all the like non-Jewish people of Portland figured out that it would be like cute to go get Chinese food on Christmas. Like we're going to be Jewish now and do this. Um, I got culturally appropriated you guys. Um, and so now the lines are insane at every Chinese restaurant in Portland. If you try to go to a Chinese restaurant in Portland on Christmas, you're going to be waiting like two hours. I'm not kidding. It's nuts. So when we lived in Eugene, Sean actually taught himself how to cook a big Chinese spread. 
and he would make our Chinese food for Christmas Day every year. And after we moved to Portland, we started getting takeout again. And I think we might have to return to the homemade Chinese food Christmas dinner this year because I'm not about waiting two hours for my takeout food. I'm just not. Sorry, everyone. I don't do lines. I know Portland is an awful place if you don't do lines, but I don't do lines. Um, and that's kind of it. That's our that's our deal. That's our family's tradition around Hanukkah and Christmas. Um, and uh, the other thing is, of course, we live far away from our family, so we love to send care packages with lots of presents and homemade cards and lots of love, of course, to all of our far-flung family members and our chosen family, of course. Um, and I just got done doing that. Actually, all of the big packages of presents are going off to our family um, in the mail today. And I'm super excited um, for everybody to get their stuff and open it because I love giving presents. It's such a wonderful feeling to... Um, send something to someone you love that you think will make their day or entertain them or help keep them warm or help them feel good about themselves or whatever the present is that you got them. So um, I'm super excited about that. And I will say one more thing. Um, my mom has come here the last, oh, I want to say four or five years. She's been here for Christmas and New Year's. Um, and it's kind of funny because she's the Jewish side of the family, but she's been here for Christmas for several years. Um, and one of our traditions is we always get a new jigsaw puzzle and we do it on New Year's Eve. Um, and this year, of course, my mom is not going to be able to come join us, which sucks. Um, but I really wanted to keep the tradition alive of doing a puzzle together for New Year's Eve. So what I did was I went out and I bought two of the exact same jigsaw puzzle and I wrapped one up for Sean and the kids and I wrapped one up and I mailed it to my mom. So we're not going to be able to do our jigsaw puzzle together, but we're going to be able to do the same jigsaw puzzle separately at the same time. So kind of, kind of cute idea I thought for a, a COVID uh, distanced holiday celebration. Um, and I wanted to throw it out there. If any of you are missing family members and have a tradition like playing a board game or doing a puzzle or something like that, um, maybe you could take the same idea and get two copies of the same game, two copies of the same puzzle, um, send one to your distant loved one and keep one for yourself and get on a Zoom call or whatever and, you know, do the puzzle together. So that, that's what we're going to do. So I hope it's as much fun as I think it's going to be. Um, We'll have to wait and find out. All right, that's it for now, you guys. Again, I want to wish everyone watching a happy Hanukkah. Um, get out there and eat some greasy food. Gamble with your friends. Try not to lose all your money. Um, light some candles. Light up this darkest part of the year. And uh, tell somebody you love that you love them. That's the spirit, right? All right. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. Take care out there. I will be back in a few more days with another episode of my vlog. Until then.